Now I am honored to present the AIA's 25-year award to what has been called by many one of the great works of the 20th century. This award recognizes architectural design of enduring significance. It's conferred on a project that has stood the test of time, and this project certainly has. In fact, during our celebration of the AIA's 150th anniversary back in 2007, its vaulted ceiling stations earned a place on the public's list of America's favorite architecture. This year's recipient perfectly exemplifies our theme of putting purpose into practice. This timeless project demonstrates excellence in function, in the distinguished execution of its original program, and in the creative aspects of its statement by today's standards. We invite you to take a brief ride with us on the Washington DC Metro. One element of the design that always impresses me when I go down there is if you're sitting on a platform with a side platform station, so the light is coming up from the tracks in the middle and a train pulls in, you see the shadow of the train up on the vault. So the lighting is coming from the bottom, the train blocks it and you can watch the train come in by looking up. And what's great is it's the opposite of an airplane. An airplane zooms by and casts a shadow on the ground. A subway train zooms by and casts a shadow on the sky. And really give you a sense that you're not just waiting for a train coming in, you're watching a moment of drama. And I'll never get tired of it. This is a fairly recent collection of comics about the history of Washington, D.C. And it shows Weiss as something of a comic book superhero fighting against Gordon Bunshaft, his antagonist and imagining the design process as Weiss coming up with a vault that would be true to his own wish for maximum spaciousness, but also satisfy the Commission of Fine Arts' wishes for formality. We started the conversation by talking about the riders. What would the riders want? He kept coming back to this word, spacious. He didn't want people to feel cramped in the underground station. He wanted it to be a place where people would feel good. And that meant to have more of an almost artificial outdoors, uh, almost a sky. So the vault does a lot, but there's a lot more going on. We do have a very consistent color palette based on what we call the monumental materials. So bronze, granite, uh, you have the terracotta colored tiles that can evoke some of the Roman architecture. But what makes it particularly amazing is that it's a system that serves up to a million riders a day. So it's got this incredible functional load pushed on it. And that is a product of the part of the architectural design that we made something so inviting, so comforting, so delightful, so manageable that all these people, whether they live in Washington, D.C. proper, whether they're coming in from the suburbs, whether they're visiting from across the country, or across the world, can all share this space and feel that they can navigate it and feel that this is a place that they want to be. This bit of architecture that we created is important not just for the underground spaces of the city, but really for the whole regional structure. Washington, D.C. is thriving is in part because people are willing to take transit. It's really hard for infrastructure to rise to the level of architectural greatness. And that's something that Metro does. What a gorgeous project, and still as fabulous today as it was the day it first opened. The design elements created by Harry Weiss more than 40 years ago still define the continuing expansion of the Washington, D.C. Metro in an unmistakably monumental mid-century modernist manner. Nationally, its beauty and functionality have reawakened a new interest 
in the possibilities of public transportation as an engine of sustainable growth. This magnificent achievement underscores the AIA's belief that architects can and are making amazing contributions to society by working with a government that has the foresight to invest in a high quality of infrastructure like the Metro that will yield lasting benefits for generations to come. That's why we have and will continue to advocate for federal investment in a sound infrastructure for this nation's future growth and prosperity. Here to accept this year's 25-year award is Harry's brother, Ben Weiss, FAIA, and Ben's son, Dan Weiss, AIA. Good afternoon and thank you. Um, just in case you were wondering, I'm Dan and this is Ben. <laughs> it is an honor and a privilege for us to both accept the AIA 25 year award on behalf of Harry and his family. As you know, the Metro system is a mammoth project that lasted many years and involved many professionals working in a highly collaborative environment. To all those involved, I know Harry would extend his congratulations and his gratitude. We would like to mention a few who were central figures in the project. First of all, Jack Hartray in the audience with us today, who was a young project architect. Jack. Jack was a young project architect in Harry's office and helped land the, the commission in 1965 with his now famous wordsmith, wordsmithing. Um, Stanley Allen, also with us today, uh, moved his family. Stanley. Stanley moved his family to Washington to be the on-site architect for over 10 years. He guided the project through many bureaucracies and technical challenges while never losing sight of the original vision of Harry's. The graphic designer Massimo Vignelli, who recently passed away, was an active collaborator on the experiential details. He, in fact, coined the name Metro itself. And Bill Lamb, a lighting designer, designed the subtle uplighting and the pulsating edge of platform lighting that alerts passengers to an approaching train. A special thanks also um, to Doug Dilden and to Bill Gallagher, both of whom worked with Harry on the project back in the 70s, and who yesterday presented an in-depth description of the design and process of the Metro, along with Bob Brugman, who gave a background on Harry's early life and is the author of The Architecture of Harry Weiss. I don't know if they're in the audience, but if they could if we could acknowledge him, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. I also, I also want to thank Bill, who was an instrumental person putting the, uh, the uh, submission together for the award. Um, now a few words just about Harry and, and, and the project. Um, throughout his career, as you, many of you know, Harry was a fierce advocate for cities. He bucked the trends of his times, calling for renewed investment in the country's urban centers, even championing the restoration of historic structures that were being demolished at an astounding rate. He also valued the impact of architecture on a citywide and a regional scale. The Metro brought together all of these considerations and was an enormously challenging and gratifying project for him and for the many people that worked on it for the 30 years that it was in existence in the office as a project. The simple forms and the details of the metro, in addition to the materials that were mentioned earlier, have an economy of means that is perhaps influenced by Harry's coming of age during the Great Depression and World War II. The focus was on the exhilarating spaces of the stations that you saw with the vaulting and so forth, where the architecture truly comes alive. And it is in those spaces that the collective nature of the city of Washington is expressed, and by extension, I would say, the nation itself. It is, I believe, a fitting public monument for our nation's capital. Thank you. Ready? Let's go. 
so much. Thank you.